The content in this video was created for documentary and educational purposes only, so if you're not 18 or older, shut it off right now. And if we disappear, go to CannabisLifestyleTV.com. They ate some fucking weed. So, believe it or not, there's a lot of people who quit growing bud. I'd say every year, bro science numbers, let's say 10,000 people start growing weed. And let's say maybe a thousand of those people decide maybe it's not for them. I'm just throwing numbers out there completely. I just know a lot of people that I've dealt with over time who started growing. They purchased tents. They've gotten an entire room set up or they've put thousands and thousands of dollars in lights and genetics just to find them on Craigslist or a Facebook marketplace maybe six months later. I quit. Now, if that's you or you're considering maybe hanging them up, hold on, hold on, because I got some reasons why you may not want to quit and some reasons why you may have considered it. Stay tuned. So if you're new here, don't know what's going on, this is CLTV, it's your boy Rob from CLTV, and from From the Stash Podcast, Top Buds, Rob Blogs, all sorts of places. But we're on CLTV, so make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, like button if you like videos like this, notification bell if you want to be notified every time we drop content, and have one rolled up. Because we're about to get lifted. Let's go get high and talk about other times we got high. So reason number one I see a lot of people quit is low yield. Yes, it, as vain as that sounds, and for the cash croppers out there, you may you know resonate with that. But for the most part, low yield is pretty common for a lot of people who are just getting started, mainly because they don't have the basics down. Some of those things being as simple as not having the adequate veg time, which is crazy, but yes, a lot of people go through that. Usually it's having too much veg time, which that can still hinder your performance, but for the most part, too little is definitely gonna be where it's an issue. If you're putting in plants that can't hold the buds, they can't pack the weight, then overall they're not gonna be able to pack the weight and hold the buds. Seems like common sense, right? But you don't know until you grow. It's really about letting your plant grow and you can see that it's not going to be able to maintain the weight. Even if you think it's going to double in size, where it's at right now isn't quite mature enough for it to be flipped into flower. So you want to be able to give it enough time for that veg, but also so you can train the plant. Maybe you didn't have enough training on that plant. Now that could be low stress training. That could be topping or fimming, super cropping, defoliation, utilizing the sea green technique or multiple other things that we've gone over on this channel. The main thing is you need to be able to have enough time to work that plant enough so she's strong, hardy, and she's got the, the strength for girth, we'll say. We're not gonna talk about girth, are we? No. Also, other things that could be affecting your yield is inadequate feeding or inadequate environment. Now, if you're choking out your plants with too high of humidity or too low of humidity, too high of temperature or too low of temperature, it's gonna stress your plant out and it's not gonna be able to perform like it should. That's gonna affect all sorts of things, but especially that yield. Now, same with feeding. Too little or too much of nutrients are gonna affect the overall growth of your plant. Oh, it's obvious. Now, it seems common sense, right? If you're just working out or you're trying to do anything in life, you're not having adequate nutrition in your body, then obviously your body's not gonna be able to perform like it's supposed to. Same with plants. So at that point, you're gonna make sure that you're giving your plant the exact micro and macronutrients that it's gonna need. Different cultivars are gonna act different ways, of course, but for the most part, you're gonna to have to figure out exactly what your plant needs. It doesn't take rocket appliances to realize all you gotta do is follow directions on the back of the bottle or do an organic mix and follow a recipe to the T. It's pretty straightforward. And last but not least, of course, genetics, genetics, genetics. Now when it comes down to it, there is some cultivars that just don't produce a whole lot. Prime example is this Gorilla Butter that I'm growing right now. She dank, but doesn't pack on the weight. As were others that I've grown in the past, they yield very heavy, but don't really have other areas that I'm looking for. So it just really depends on, on your goal, obviously, but for the most part, a lower yielding genetic is not gonna be a heavy yielding genetic at any point. This is what it is. The next reason I've heard of a lot of people quitting is low quality. Now again, this can usually be determined by genetics, oftentimes, but also, more times than not, it seems like not having the adequate micro and macronutrients. The plants are just not getting what they need. I know people who try to skimp on their food and the plants just don't produce every area, not just the yield, but that quality. All your cannabinoids are gonna need that nutrition in order to be able to develop properly on your plant. So if you're not feeding things properly, they're not gonna get it, they just won't. What do you suggest? If you wanna get your essential micro and macronutrients and get the best growth for your buck, check out Dutch Pro USA. And to save some pesos, use 00CLTV10 at checkout. But then once you feed everything proper and you go into harvest, what if you harvest too early or too late? That's also a big factor. You can end up getting some hay-like boof and you don't want to have that, trust me. Been there too many times in the past and it's just not worth it. It's, it's not worth it. Then when you harvest though, you've got drying and curing. 
So there's areas that you can mess up in, and I, I totally understand where people end up having bud that they don't like. But trust me, most of us growers have been there. It's really about trying to figure out ways to combat that before you get to that point. We've got plenty of videos over here on Seal TV about drying, curing, harvesting, pretty much all over the web. You'll be able to find information that you need. So before you get to that point, do the due diligence and do some research. Because trust me, you get to a point where you've gone too far, you can't go back. This is what it is. Overdone and dry. Next reason I see a lot of people quit is it just costs too much. What's your broke ass? And really this is gonna be something that's subjective. It depends on where you live and what you end up buying. When I first started, I spent way too much fucking money to get going. If you're a, a follow over here on Seal TV, you probably heard me talk about it. If you're not, here's the story. I spent thousands of dollars to get going. Didn't even have half the shit, but I thought I was gonna have beginning, middle, and end of my garden the first day. So don't spend too much money, be smart about it, and try to utilize your resources properly because if you go into it with too much uh too much basically purchased or too much money invested you're gonna have a quota and that's gonna make it an uphill battle and it's gonna really stress you out when i first got started i needed to yield x amount per plant in order to just make my money back and that was it's not smart really stressful start there and i could see where that would make a lot of people want to quit also if you end up buying stuff that's going to be a little too high in the electrical consumption something like a high pressure sodium or hid lighting over an led that's where the balance is your monthly cost versus your initial cost. You got to figure that one out. Over time, that monthly cost may make you want to quit when you're thinking, shit, I'm spending more per month than I would just buying the bud from the dispo, which I don't believe that's a real thing. Those numbers still don't add up. But if you have that mentality, just, just think about scaling it back a little bit and seeing how you could dial back the cost by maybe spending a little bit more on quality equipment. The next thing I see people quit for really pisses me off, honestly, and that's that it takes too much time and effort. Oh, lazy. Again, subjective. If you're in a situation where you've got a family, you're working a nine to five, you're really busy, it may make more sense to just get a caregiver at that point. Or if your recreational or medicinal herb is a little bit more affordable, okay, I get it. But if you're growing and you thought this was gonna be easy, it's offensive. It's almost offensive, it is offensive. I'm offended. So it, it takes some effort, man. But for the most part, once you get a process and a system down, it's not labor intensive. It's pretty easy. You let the plants grow. You don't need to be all over them, hovering them all the time. You don't need to be in your room constantly. The larger grow you have, the more time it's going to take to maintain them. But for the most part, you don't have to have your whole entire life surrounded by the garden. It's not that kind of plant. You know, you really need to, I wouldn't say set it and forget it, but you need to keep your system in line initially. So that way, everything that you're doing is going to be pretty simple and easy to maintain. Otherwise, it gets overwhelming and it gets to the point where it's just unappealing. You don't want to do it, you know? So and that's where it comes down to simplifying the process, either changing up how you're growing, changing up some of the equipment to automate the stuff in there, or just overall changing it up. I went from having a larger space, two larger spaces, to having two smaller tents. For me, it's all I really need. And for the most part, it's about dialing in your process, dialing in the cultivars you want to grow, and everything else from there will just flow. It'll all pick up over time, and you'll add little things consistently over the years. I'm 15 years into growing, and I still learn all the time. And I'm still finding ways to simplify my process from you Gromies online, from some of my local Gromies, and even just common sense and trial and error. Common sense isn't common anymore, but you know what I mean. If you're struggling in your garden, you need some one-on-one -on -one help or just direct on-demand courses, check out 420growersclub.com and join over 5,000 Gromies that are trying to get that dank just like you. Now, if you're looking for a grow light but don't have it in the budget, I'm giving away a Mars Hydro LED light on my other channel, Rob Vlogs. Over there, you can see some details on the light, my opinion so far, and learn how you can win the light for yourself. But if you don't win and you're still trying to get a Mars Hydro light, you can use discount code CLTV at checkout. To save a little bit of yen. So with that being said, Gromies, if there's something I missed, make sure you drop it in the comment section. Hit this like button if you like videos like this. Subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, stay lifted.